What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now this here is my WWDC 20 software preview and everything we expect to see at Apple's keynote for iOS, iPadOS, watchOS and more. It will be live streamed by Apple on Monday, June the 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. You also know that means I'll be having a live stream of my own BTZ style right here on my YouTube channel starting around 9 a.m. Pacific time. That's an hour before the keynote. I'll take your calls and tweets, do some giveaways during the pre-show and post-show of the keynote. And we know that keynote day is the best time to really connect with everyone. So come on out, it's gonna be a good show. Now you can also check out my WWDC hardware preview after watching this one because they were just too long to sandwich together. So buckle up everybody, we're gonna cover a whole lot here. We're gonna start off with iOS 14. It's always the biggest of the bunch. iOS 14, it leaked months ago, so people have been really able to pick it apart. It won't change drastically and will keep most of its design aspects, but 9 to 5 Mac reports a new homepage screen will let you see all your apps in a list view that you can scroll through with different sorting options. It will likely be similar to what's on the Apple Watch, but now for the iPhone. Apple's also working on home screen widgets. They wouldn't be pinned to the screen like iPad OS 13 has, but you'd be able to move them around like apps or some, some similar to like a platform that's had them for ages called Android. You might have heard of it. Seriously, I mean, how many years have we been asking for widgets? It's been so long, but we could finally get them in iOS 14. Now, wallpapers will be separated by different collections based on their style with categories like classic stripes, flowers or earth and moon. And it will also be the first time you can set a wallpaper for your CarPlay background. The biggest car feature though has to be the car key API that Apple has been working on since iOS 13.4 iOS 14 should finally bring us the ability to unlock or lock your car and even start its engine with your iPhone or Apple Watch if it's compatible. Many car manufacturers haven't been able to have iOS integration like this because Apple hasn't made the API available for them. 9 to 5 Mac discovered that BMW may be the first car to support the car key feature. Also, Apple Maps will get more detailed. Now, the timing may not be the best since things are really a long ways away from getting back to normal, but Apple stores will show more details like hardware repair availability appointments in the future. These are things that go beyond just the normal time it's open and phone number information we normally see. Apple Maps will also highlight details like places with seating for couples on a date night, discounts for children, and private rooms for parties. Yes, again, this probably isn't the most handy right now, but Information like this continues to make Apple Maps a better product and I would be the first to admit it's gotten a whole lot better specifically over the past few years as an app that I don't quit out of. Now I could see them delaying this though since it just isn't as useful right now. We also have another big feature for iOS 14, an entirely new augmented reality app that's internally called Gobi. It will give users more information about what they can see around them through their phone. We know that Apple has been testing it with Apple stores and Starbucks so you could learn more about the products you're looking at with your phone just held up to it. Apple is even implementing a new QR code format that uses colored cones arranged in a circle that were discovered in iOS 14. Now, all of this is just really laying the foundation for Apple to see how people are using AR and they'll take those learnings to help them develop the long rumored and currently in development Apple glasses. Now, HomeKit will get a cool new feature in iOS 14 called Night Shift to Light and it will give the ability to change the color temperature of compatible smart lights based on the time of day. Similar to, think about how night shift works on your iPhone and Mac displays, but this time it would be for your smart lights. It's also planning to improve its HomeKit secure video system and will be able to identify specific people on camera according to reports like family members to give them custom notifications. That doesn't sound creepy at all, but it could be really useful. I'm just gonna have to see how they implement this. Safari is also expected to get a built-in translator to directly translate web pages without a third-party app. This is gonna be a lot more helpful than people think, especially when you need it on the spot. And then we have OS Recovery. This is another feature that Apple is testing and could be used to restore an iOS device directly over the air without needing to rely on a computer. You could even connect it to another iPhone or iPad, similar to Apple's migration tool on the Mac. So those are some of the key iOS 14 updates that we expect to see at WWDC. It's not gonna fundamentally do much different, but obviously car key and augmented reality, that's the most interesting right now based on what we know. And I'm obviously excited to see what iPad OS 14 brings now that we have the magic keyboard. It's all about the magic. You know how much I've talked about the iPad and Apple Watch 
unless it's your first time here. I knew people, but it's really the time to open up the floodgates and do more for iPad OS. At the moment, though there isn't too much that's been revealed, according to 9to5Mac, Apple could be adding full support for the Apple Pencil on websites so you can not only scroll and select specific parts of it, but also draw and mark up web pages from Safari and also other browsers. And then this much needed tweak, a keyboard brightness shortcut because we know the Magic Keyboard has no function keys at all. Apple's been testing this already and it would be a welcome addition instead of us going into the control center or the settings in the app. Yeah, I know it's first world problems, but those are really the only iPad OS things we know right now. There has to be more than that at WWDC. And because of that, I'm thinking, I'm gonna be positive here, iPad OS could potentially bring a little more excitement. Yeah, I I'm hoping. Now the latest reports say iOS 14 will be compatible with all phones that currently support iOS 13. So that takes us as far back as the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. If you're looking at your phone right now, you're probably cheering. It also includes the iPod Touch 7th generation. I'm, I'm looking at you four people. Now, I'm kidding. Now, don't get hurt. The iPad OS will be compatible as far back as the iPad 5th generation and newer. And again, some of this can and probably will change, but that's what we have for iOS 14 and iPad OS 14 right now. All right, let's jump over to dun -dun -dun, Watch OS 7, lucky number seven. Well, it's actually number eight if you're Chinese, that's lucky. But the Apple Watch is still the most exciting product to me in Apple's lineup with still so much more room to evolve and grow. 9 to 5 Mac again though, says iOS 14 was really able to open up the floodgates and access many of the new features coming to the Apple Watch in Watch OS 7. Now new watch faces are always a given, but a new Infograph Pro option could include a built-in tachometer. This is an analog watch scale that you typically find in analog watches around the edge, kind of on the outside of the watch face that helps measure speed and distance. It's now coming to the Apple Watch. You'll also be able to create your own personal watch face from your own photos or even have a shared family album in iCloud that others can use and then it constantly updates. I like that. Plus a new watch face called International that will showcase flags from different countries. There will be at least two new health features on Apple Watch coming this year. And Apple's focus in this area has just really elevated it to be the number one smartwatch hands down. Apple is developing a new Apple Watch feature for detecting blood oxygen levels, according to 9to5Mac. Blood oxygen levels between 95 to 100% are considered healthy. Levels below 80 could lead to a breakdown in heart and brain functionality or even cardiac arrest. Now the Apple Watch would actively measure it and send you notification if you fall below a certain level. Sleep tracking. This has been on Apple's radar for the longest time. Let's just hope that this is the year that it finally happens because reports say we'll finally get sleep tracking in 2020. I'm gonna wait and see. It will use an Apple first party sleep app. It will measure a person's quality of sleep using its sensors and metrics like heart rate, noises that are made and movement. There will also be a sleep mode to dim the Apple Watch or turn on the do not disturb mode. Your alarms will also integrate with the sleep tracking. So if you wake up before your alarm and start moving around, it will automatically turn that off. Bloomberg has also vaguely mentioned new fitness features coming to the Apple Watch, but there have not been any specific details. It's also still uncertain if blood oxygen monitoring or sleep tracking will require new hardware or how far back these features will be supported on older Apple Watches. But if they are tied to new hardware, then I don't think we should expect to see these until a new Apple Watch Series 6 is announced. Now we talked about car key in iOS 14 and the Apple Watch will be able to support that as well. We're also expecting to get a kids mode that will be designed to make it easier for parents to manage Apple Watches used by children. And instantly I'm, I'm thinking, how young or old are these kids? Honestly, how many of you have families where all of your kids are decked out with Apple Watches that don't work for Apple, right? Well, the main part of this is making it easier for setup because currently you can only have one Apple Watch paired to a single iOS device at one time. This would change and allow a parent to pair and manage multiple watches with multiple people. There's also gonna be a new feature called School Time that will allow parents to manage the apps that kids can use during certain hours of the day. So those are kind of the big things we talk about Watch OS 7, the big focus will likely be the new health features and I cannot wait to see what else they show us because there has to be more. Now, if you're thinking about Mac OS, there really hasn't been much reported around it. We honestly know almost nothing about it, but I think that can be a good thing too. Like I told you, I like surprises, but it will likely take some more cues from iOS like it did last year 
Remember they did the revamped app store allowing apps on iOS to be able to play nice with macOS. Maybe we'll see catalyst versions of iOS apps appear, things like messages and even more, but I don't expect to see iPadOS stuff come over to the Mac unless they do what they have never done and finally give us some sort of a Mac with a touch screen. But the biggest question here with macOS might be what will it be named using California landmarks for it? That's what they've done recently. So could we see Monterey, macOS Monterey, macOS Mammoth or good old macOS downtown LA. Now maybe it will give me a reason to also bring back an old friend. Oh, good old Mac Sierra. We love that guy. Now that's gonna do it for this video, all the software that we expect to see. But remember, you gotta check out my WWDC hardware preview. We also talk about IMAX and the ARM chip transition. But if you like this video, give me that thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell, ding, to get all my videos when they drop. Plus, if you want even more, check out my Apple Bits XL audio podcast where we dive deep into these topics and more, and I'm completely independent. I would love your support at patreon.com slash Brian Tong. It supports the podcast and really all the work that I do. Plus, remember Apple's keynote, live stream on Monday, June the 22nd at 10 a.m. Pacific time, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'll be having my own live stream to follow along with it right here on this channel around, let's say 9 a.m. Pacific time. We start about an hour before the keynote to just get you all in that mindset. All right, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take care and be safe, and I'll see you then. Peace.